Hi everyone, this is Sebastian from VDD Assets and today I want to show you how to install Foundry VDT and to install some modules and to set those up. So once you've downloaded your Windows setup, this for Windows users, I assume that Linux users know what they are doing. Uh, don't feel bad, I'm a Windows user myself, so here we are. Um, you download that, you want to execute, um, run the executable and Windows warns you. Uh, I don't know what it is. Um, perhaps don't don't try this at home, kids. You should say, ah, please allow installation. Then you will accept and read thoroughly through the um, um, license agreement. And then you will say it should be just for me. So I, I'll install it in the default um, directory, just as you would do it. And I have to admit that this is the first time I'm using the Windows installer. I'm using a different method, but just because I want to keep different versions of Foundry in parallel, that's probably not your use case. So, okay, Foundry VDT says you, it was installed correctly and we can actually run it. So, it runs. So, there it is. And it found some old data here. Okay. Let's let's yeah let's let's look at that. It says here in this path is got um let's press F F eleven for once so we can minimize it and we can see our desktop again and we can go to the Foundry VTT homepage on, on the same side here because what I wanted to show you is Mm -hmm. There's a path where Foundry stores his user data and that's the path that you will be working on on a regular basis. So I'm showing you here how to find it. And this is the data path. So if you hear the, um, the, mm, the, the expression date path, then this is what we are searching for right now. And you will find it here under hosting and connectivity guide. Where do I put my data? And you can see it's it's here's a reference to Foundry data path. You can set this path to your liking, but per default it's this weird path. You hardly say this is a regular path. That is because this local app data with the the percentage symbols and front and, and the end of this string references to an environment variable that is accessible from Windows. So this is actually a path that we can copy and uh, we can go to the Explorer and we can paste it here and then here we are. So this is the Foundry um, app data path. And you see here's some config, um, here's some data already. Let's see, no modules installed, there's a system installed, but we will probably need to update that. and worlds here's a dev world already running that's probably what i i installed it once i okay now this is the second time i'm using the windows install actually but it's good to know already forgot um all right so we've got no modules we've got a system here let's let's close this uh let's delete the system do it from scratch um we've got no modules let's delete this world too. So when we are running Foundry VDD again, again we press F11 to minimize it a little bit. Then we see no game system, no game world, and mm, update software. Oh, should be good. We just downloaded it from Patreon. So let's install the game system, and you will find that in the community VTT community wiki. I'll put a link into the description. And here we can see we've got adventures. I don't know if there are the lost city of Baraka. So this is already an adventure. That's nice. But game system. We're interested in game systems. So and I'm a D&D 5e player. We select this one. And then we can see we've got some links over here. And we are interested in this system.json. So if you install game systems or modules, you would always install them by copying a URL referencing to either system.json for game systems or module.json for modules. So we will be doing this pretty often. 
we right click here, we copy the link and we go to Foundry. And then we go to Game Systems and on the bottom we find the button Install Systems. So here we can paste this URL we just copied into the clipboard. We hit Install and then installation is beginning. It takes a little while because it's a um, pretty hefty package already. And here we are. So we've installed this all right. Now we can create a game world. So we select game world here, we create a world, we can name it whatever we like. So I'm pretty not, uh, my wife always says I've got so much fantasy, but by naming things, I'm really bad. So let's call it dev. This is my dev world. No, it's a, it actually, it's not dev world, it's a demo world. So uh, we um, insert a title and a fight path and because nobody likes spaces, please don't use spaces here. Just use hyphens or just like that. I, I like it that way. And we are selecting the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition game system we just installed. Um, I've got no background image right now. Um, and I'm right with that. Um, ah, let's, let's search for D&D 5e wallpaper. Okay, oh, images. This is the first time I'm trying out the new Chrome Edge version, and let's take this one. That's good. I think if it's loading, I don't know. There it is. So we copy the image link. Now we need to download it. We save the image uh, here. Dd five e wallpaper. upload that one so see we here we are we have got the user data and the core data this is another directory that foundry uses for its data itself i recommend using uh, putting all your data into the user data and here what we can do actually we can go into this data directory and we can just add some folders here like um i like um, an upload folder um I, and inside I can say wallpapers and let's create uh, user user uploads for later. So we use this upload and let's close it again. And here we are, so upload wallpapers. And then we select, uh, can we do no upload? Aha, uh -huh. here the upload directories, upload cap capabilities not yet implemented. So let's go here um, to pictures. I've got this here. Let's go back to the wallpaper directory and paste it here. And here we go. So then let's create this world and let's launch it. Here, um, Windows Firefox says how this program wants to open a port and the port is always uh, like a channel between your computer and other computers and your firewall blocks or opens those ports. So if you want anyone to access your um, Foundry VTT installation or even you yourself, you should open this port. But this is uh, network security related and this is not the focus of this video. It's a pretty complicated thing. I for once cannot even invite people to my Foundry VTT instance because of my internet provider, provider, but your mileage hopefully varies from that. So I say, okay, it's for, for my home network, I allow the access to this Foundry VTT um, installation. And for some reason it always takes ages to, um, for my computer to, actually acknowledged my decisions here but here we are we've got this wonderful background image from this red dragon and we have our demo world and i log in as a game master here i can provide an access key please this is not as a really really secure password it is just a means for you to block out everyone else but it's not highly secure it's just a plain text uh, which is saved in a in a in a 
text file basically in the foundry installation directory in the data directory and anyone who can access your computer physically can read that key so it's not very secure but let's do something we take a b c and let's join the game session so here we are this is foundry vtt on the top and bot bottom left corner we see that we are mm, the user game master who has the gm role um, in the bottom right we can see those nifty little icons and what we will be doing here is we go to the settings and uh, let's have a look at the settings so these are the language preferences not very interesting not the focus of this video um, the module settings we will be doing much of our configurations later for the module settings and when we install a module module in foundry terms is just um, a package or a kind of tool that enhances the functionality of foundry and people like me are developing modules and releasing them you will be installing them and this is exactly the place where you will be configuring those uh, so we will be there in a couple of minutes so right now we will be configure a new player uh, we will be creating another user because um, the way the windows foundry server works is it's like an chrome included browser but the problem for my module is we need to run a chrome extension within the browser and this integrated chrome browser doesn't know anything about extensions so they won't run here so what we need to do is we run foundry vtt the windows executable and we can log in as the game master to start the game but we will be creating a second game master like um my name is Sebastian, so let's create uh, Game Master Sebastian. And that's all, no, no access key or password provided. So we are still the Game Master here. But what we will be doing now is we will be connecting to this locally hosted um, Foundry installation on your computer by using a browser window. And we do that by going to localhost double a uh, colon it's colon in english and then 30000 30000 is the port that the foundry um, server is listening to for connections so we'll be connecting to the local host which is a reference to your local computer and uh, this is kind of an alias and we go to the port 30000 and we hit enter and then we see the demo world so this is basically a second a possibility to connect to your foundry server and your your users like um, can do the same they can connect by browser and you can too so you can see that here in the game settings on the invitation links you will can see this you can copy the local network actually instead of using local host you can use that and that's exactly the same thing so we log in as Sebastian here. So now we can see we've got two users connected. Both are GMs. One is the user Game Master, one is the user Sebastian. Okay, this is um, basic configuration. Just one more thing. Oh, we do that later. So let's add some modules. And um, I will show you how to... Um, how to do how to download and install my modules so we go to vdtassets.com i'm logged in so let's log out first you can access most of the modules over here on the assets foundry vtt modules you'll see all these five modules that i'm currently maintaining and developing and you can install all of them actually for free um, if you hit view details you can see a description on the left and on the right hand side some screenshots and then you can see two channels the latest and the stable release the stable release is always for free the latest release is locked for patreon supporters and you can see here the version number in this case it's not different so the version is actually the same but on the dnd beyond that's the module that 
is the most interesting one. Actually, the other modules are laying a framework, a fundament for this one, because this is where really my heart is. Mm, I like that. Um, here you can see the stable release is 1.0.2 and the latest release is the, at this time of recording, the .8, but I will be showcasing the development version, which is .9 or even 1.1, let's see. So you will be, um, see that this is locked, so I log in with Patreon here and you will be surprised that I'm supporting myself. And this is the best person to support you is always yourself. Um, and you see that you can now download or copy the manifest link. And you can see this ends with module.json. In the beginning of the video, I uh, told you that there are system.json for game systems and module.json for, um, um, yes, for modules. So it's no surprise to see that here. We copy this link by hitting that icon and we go to the Foundry install. And here we are logged in, so we need to change that. We hit Escape and we return to Setup. And here we can go to Add-on Modules. Like with the, uh, with the game systems on the bottom, Install System, the modules have Install Module and the dialog is, is very similar. So you just paste this module JSON URL link here and the module is installed. And we can repeat that for all the other modules here. But um, since I will be using um, the development version th that are currently only on my local computer, not yet uploaded, we will be uninstalling this again. And I will just copy paste those from my foundry data, data modules, and we'll be using the DD Beyond, Iconizer, Tokenizer, all these very, very nifty um, mod modules. And we go, oh no, uh, not in this. We need to go to these um, app data thingy again. Do, 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 do. How do we find that again? Ah, wait a second. Here we are. Here we are. So back to the Foundry homepage. Hosting connectivity guide. Where do I put my put my data? There's this Windows link, and that is the right directory. So I will be copying those over here. You will notice that I will copy the shared module because we will be installing that actually by hand, and I tell you why in a second. So we go to the VTT assets homepage again. We go to the shared module, and this is really. This is the most tiny module that you can develop because it has no functionality. It just provides three um, compendia, one for spells, one for items, one for monsters. Why would you need such a module? Because every time you update your like game system, the D&D 5e game system or a module, it will be erased from your hard disk and then the zip file that is downloaded in the background will be just unpacked in, in that directory. So if I would provide um, compendiums, these three for example, and you will update with this module, it will always be replaced by a blank compendium with no content. Even if you put like 50 monsters and 20 items and 30 spells in there, when you update the module, it will be erased, so we don't want that to happen. Because of that, I just created this shared module, which will never receive an update because there's no functionality to update, so we, you will always leave that in place. As a further benefit, you can just put all your stuff into these three modules, um, Compendia, sorry, and you can just enable that module on all your different worlds you will be creating. So for example, let's, let's, let's not talk about it, let's install it and I will show you that. So you see that this is shared data. The other three, they are appearing because I copied them on the file system. You can see this is 1.0.9 already. The other ones are the same, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, what we will be needing for Iconizer is, and let's go here. 
we were needing this directory too. So it's in the data directory, it's iconizer, and these are all the icons. And you can read how to get those icons for yourself by going to the VTT assets homepage. You go to assets, founder VTT modules, and then iconizer. And here you can see how you can create your own icons. I cannot provide those because they are copyrighted and for good reason, but you can download them for free and you can create your own icon set by yourself. So, but I will copy those already. Where are we? So many windows open. So again, we've got all these modules and we are ready to launch your our world again. And now you see it's not different. It's just the same as before, but you will see here, once you install a module, you have to enable it. So we go to the game settings and then manage modules. And you can see all these modules are not yet enabled. Let's change that. Check all those boxes and save Foundry reloads. Let's check if yes, the icons are there. It's nice. So let's check the, the, the settings. We configure the settings now. And if we head over to module settings, we can see that these got populated by different like modules and the respective settings. We've got settings for Iconizer, Tokenizer, and the DMD Beyond integration module. All right. Um, what we need to do is let's start with the shared module because that's not here because the shared module as i said provides no functionality it just adds new compendiums so let's go to the compendium packs and you will actually see this one monsters is from the shared module and spells is from shared and sp and spells srd is from dnd 5e so these are the same almost but these are coming from the game system this spells compendium is coming from the shared module but you will notice that i can click on those normally if i click on that one it opens up with all the contents in there but this is a known i don't know foundry bug or it's perhaps only with my computer i don't know but once i click here it, it doesn't really open so what i need to do is because i enabled the shared module and those entries are here but the underlying data is still missing so i just make it the hard way i return to setup and i launch the bolt again and if i go to the compendium then it hopefully opens yeah, here we go so now it should be okay so let's check all of those this is the items shared and the spells shared so these compendiums are now working that's great now we can actually go and configure the settings because we need those compendiums now. Let's go to the module settings again and let's start with the iconizer. It's because it's on top. So um, what does iconizer actually do? So if you are to create an item, let's create an item and it's a longbow. Um, you will have Wow, it's already working. That's nice because <laughs> that's not what I wanted to show. Um, okay, let's let's change that. No, okay, let's let's do it that way. Normally, um, I can create an item and it, it's a flashy, a flashy new item I just found inside that goblin over there. This is an item iconizer doesn't know so he will have no icon here this is the standard the default icon from foundry vtt and you will see if um, i create an I item that is has a name that is known to iconizer and it has a reference to an icon he will just insert that icon so you'll have a nice ui um, and the configuration is pretty simple you can say replace all icons so foundry comes with default icons for certain items too um, 
all those will be replaced or replace only the one that are like this mystery man icon or do not replace any icons and then you can uninstall iconizer actually so either all or i like that setting actually because it let all items that have a, um, a suitable icon already set and it's not the default icon this one will be replaced otherwise you will be um, leaving those intact so this is a pretty nice and um, great setting like that or you can just say replace everything I trust you uh, not not me, it's not a trust issue, but it's a trust that uh, my taste regarding icon selection is good. Um, then you can um, select icon database policy. Um, you've got a predefined database that comes with iconizer. This 1800 or 1900 items already, which have a selected icon for those items. Or you can say, I want to use a the predefined database and my custom one. What does that mean? Let's let's do it like that. So, for example, you don't like the longbow item icon I'm selecting here. Then you go to the iconizer, um, like the where your icons are living, or this directory, and you will be creating a new text file. And this you will be calling icons.json and not text. That's important. Yes, I want to change that. Ah, oh, there's already an icons.json coming with there. Ah, oh, that's mine. All right. Here we are. So this is just a text file, and you'll see um, if the item its name is test then use that icon and I can say let's create a new entry and let's say it should be longbow and let's select an icon over here let's say let's find a bow I like that one better so we copy this file name and paste it here and save it once. You see it's like curly braces, then name test. So you will find that actually over here, like creating a custom database. And if we then, we, we save that file, that's important. You said use the predefined database and my custom one. And your custom ones is only the one that has the saying. If it's an entry in here, then it won't check the predefined database at all. So let's save these settings. And that's important. If you change that setting, you will just have to reload once. And then if we create an item now that is named Longbow, you see it's the newly selected icon. Um, it won't touch those. You will have to like edit the name once and again and then the item will actually change so and you can see now replace only default icons would be nicer here because if I make like that ah, you see it's it's not even working so i found a bug right now I, I always find bugs when i record videos so it's okay mentally noted i hope so this is actually all about um the iconizer what you need to recap real quick you need the icons and the icons should live in a folder beneath your data folder and this iconizer just you select the the folder and the user data where the icons are. You can see that this is the icon in the data directory. The iconizer directory is beneath it. So therefore, there's this iconizer selected. And then you got these PNG files from all your icons in there. You don't need to use the World of Warcraft ones. 
that I'm referencing to, you can create your own custom um, dictionary like I showed you, this um, icons.json thing, and you can create ones for your own sets. But that's iconizer checked. Let's go to, let's skip the tokenizer for a second because I will be coming to that later. That's better. Let's go to the DND Beyond integration. That's what, um, because for that module, you're all here, I think. Um, first of all, we need an upload directory for our, um, like all these images that will be imported by when you import a monster. We need a location for that. So we go again to our data di directory. We've got an upload folder created already. And we can create a folder here like um, DMD Beyond. That's okay. So let's th select here and we go to upload DMD Beyond. That's, that's great. So entity import policy, it means if you, you have the possibility to import a monster either to the world or to a compendium. And if you want to import to a compendium, for example, the compendium from the shared module, you will say, what, what do you want to do if you encounter that this entity already exists in the compendium? So should I override it? Um, that is, should I update it? Or should I say, no, it's already there, I skip that import. And that's exactly the entity art import policy over here. So you can say either save all entities, override existing ones, or save new entities only, do not override existing ones. That's the two settings. So um, I will just save all entities. I know what I'm doing, hopefully. Most of the time that's true. And then we need to select the compendium, the target compendiums for items. Let's select the items. This is coming, uh, this is the same name like here, items. And this is from item shared. And the spells and the monsters too. Okay, we're all set. Let's save changes and go on with the um, DND Beyond module config just a short architectural overview. We've got uh, Foundry VTT over here, that's the server. And we've got some um, DND Beyond website, like a monster. And if we want to import that monster, how does that happen? First of all, we need um, some layer over here. And this is our Chrome browser. The Chrome browser connects both to uh, Foundry VTT and to DND Beyond because you are looking at the page with your Chrome browser. And what we do here is we've got, um, I've, I've developed a Chrome extension that is just a little plugin that can run within the browser and that can do stuff with web pages you're visiting if you allow that. So we've got one extension and one is talking to the DND Beyond monster page and the same extension, because of the same browser, is talking to Foundry Server 2. So, therefore, we need to actually access Foundry VTT by using a Chrome or this Chromium Edge thingy from Microsoft works well too. Um, and we cannot use this one here. So the standalone tabletop application here, it has this Chrome extension that's missing with this one. So if you are using that and visit DND Beyond with the Chrome extension enabled, of course, we, you will be seeing errors. So it cannot connect to Foundry VTT because it's going over here. And therefore, we will be needing um, a Chrome browser session to Foundry VTT. It's even more complicated like that. The Chrome extension does not talk to Foundry VTT directly, but with the uh, DND Beyond module that you just installed, and the DND Beyond module talks to Foundry. And this is a rather complicated communication channel, and there can be things going wrong. So, but I help you to set up 
everything correctly and it works for so many people and I'm sure that it will work for you too. So we will be installing now this Chrome extension and I will be installing it in this Microsoft Edge browser because I want to test it if it really works. And we go to this burger menu, these are three dots on the right upper page and we go to extensions. You see I've got no inst extensions installed um, and we will find this extension actually. Um, it's coming in the same directory than the module. So you will be heading over to your data directory then to modules, then to VTTA, DND Beyond, and then you can see underscore extension, and there's a root directory. So this is actually the, the browser extension, so we need that path. So let's copy it and select it. Press Control C for copy. And in, in Chromium here, in Edge, you will need to add this extension and since it's not on the web or the Chrome store we will need to enable the developer mode that allows us to load an unpacked instant extension so we hit that button and we just insert the copied path and hit enter and then you can see this is exactly the directory we want to reference to so we hit OK we check, we use that folder and you see this is the icon, it's an unpacked extension, it's a developer extension and you see the icon over here. So that's nice, uh, that's working already. Uh, let's go to Foundry VDT and let's hit a reload and you can see over here, on the bottom left, next to my name, uh, the Foundry VTT icon is appearing too. So that means the Chrome extension actually this this thingy is working so this communication channel is working that's great news all right and let's see one thing actors directory okay um, that's good so let's head over to the beyond really the beyond had some problems in the last couple of days so let's see if it's working everything is fine and I can actually load some monsters so let's go to we want a red dragon I want a red dragon because of the wallpaper let's go an adult red dragon okay um, you can see that um, all of this is working because of several reasons actually uh, first and this is pretty visible you've got all those things just been below the, the name here and it says I you are user Sebastian you are GM so it's green we are very capable of importing stuff because you are dungeon master uh, we have a compendium set it's called monsters but the background of that is yellow that means this adult red dragon is not yet in that compendium and that's true because it's empty right let's go and check yes it's totally empty so we leave that window open here and then we can see we are connected to a world it's called demo world and this red dragon is not in the world too so let's check that we go to the actors directory here and there's no red dragon over here so everything is right um, or correct it's not right but let's make it right what we can do is first of all let's just add it to the world for example her adventure group is um, is moving its way through the woods and suddenly they need some challenge because they are uh, way too fast and your your campaign is al already almost over so let's place an adult red dragon in the way we do not need to import it to a compendium because we need it right now so let's add it just to the world so we click that button and you see it's reloading and some stuff is changing well it's not let's look at that later we head to foundry and we see okay um, this is the adult red dragon and everything this we can see over here let's go like that 
So it's no, it's a developer extension. I want to enable that. Yeah. Okay. You can first of all, you can see these um, these folder structure is created automatically. It's in the DNA Beyond Red. It's a little too bright, perhaps, but you can see there is the other Red Dragon, um, and we we can see it has well. Um, 256 hit points, everything like strength and so forth. It's all there. It's in the basic rules. The biography is set here. Um, we should add those actually to another block here. Um, I'm, I'm so excited. We've got all these um, attacks and Iconizer does its jobs by create icons already for all these items uh, so that is working too it's chaotic evil it has uh, like damage immunity fire exactly here so we've got this one now imported into the world and you can see this button is turning green so it's now found in the world actually and the thing that now changed is all these actions they changed into clickable Quick, <laughs> you can click on those buttons. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, because we've got this actor within Foundry, if I click here, it will send a message to Foundry please look at Adult Red Dragon and make a con save. And we can absolutely do that. So, let's go to the chat window here and let's just click on the con. And here we can say it's a, a bit of check. All right. Um, and it's a constitution ability check with 27. I'm just wondering why it's 25 plus 7. There's something I do, I do not quite get right now. Uh, of course, no, if I, I'm, I'm stupid. Yes, um, 1d20 plus 7 is absolutely correct. So now it's just bump for a second. I don't know where my head is. Uh, or we can make a saving throw, a deck save. Here it's 26, so it's okay. And the good thing about these buttons is that you can actually use the shortcuts that is Foundry providing for making rolls at regular roll like no advantage or disadvantage or a disadvantage or an advantaged role. So if you hold shift and click on one of those buttons, you see it just makes a regular role. If you um, hold control, it's a disadvantage and a fumble or alt for an advantage. So shift, control, alt, all these, mm, these shortcuts are working here for these number roles. Or you can say, um, I will do a multi-attack, so uh, I'll do a bite. And if you do a bite, you can roll here now with advantage or disadvantage. Yeah, no, he, he is working too with alt. See, it's uh, with advantage. Um, and you can just do anything you can do within here, just from, from the sheet. So just import it, add it to world. The page reloads once to adapt these buttons and insert those buttons and then you can just use the abilities over here no need to look and search for the actor in the foundry um, just use whatever is provided by the beyond it's great so this is one of the exciting features that is coming with the 1.0.9 i started implementing those and i'm confident that i found a way to actually pass everything really good but i need your feedback on that so i'm very excited to push this update to you and you will take it apart and report all the bugs so that's great so we've got what what we've got what we have so much here because we we, we can import monsters at a finger snap and we have those available for us and if your parties are like mine they don't do what I intend them to do. They have their own minds and it's great the way it is. But yeah, it's like the way it is. So uh, I can just react very quickly with all the resources that the Indie Beyond provides me with. And that's exciting news. 
Um, but let's not stop here because I just said party. We've got some party members, don't we? So let's create a folder real quick and name it party. And it's a character folder. Oh, I'm so good at doing stuff wrong. The webcam is in the way, <laughs> so here we go. Um, it's a party folder and let's create some actors and I don't care what their names are because we will be importing them in a Jiffy. So those are my three actors and let's go to my campaign. Let's have a look at my, my group that I'm leading through the um, the mines of Van Delver. They are actually just a tiny little bit before heading into the mines. Just one little detour. So let's take that one and Ruth Lock. Then we've got a good combination of different stuff. So we've got this um, character over here and we've got a character sheet over here and you will notice this prominent the Indivant icon. It's white right now. Let's click it. What we can do is, first of all, we copy this URL and we paste it over here. So we see this button is turning red now and that unlocks several shortcuts. We can shift and click over here and we can alt and click on this button. And let's do that. We can alt click and it says it opens the JSON. Please wait until the browser icon stops spinning or whatever indicates that it's currently loading because some characters have hefty amounts of data and it takes a couple of seconds to all load all, all of that. So let's go in here and let's control A for select all, control C for copy. And then click again here and control V, go to this JSON input field and paste it in here. All right, now we've got this character over here and we've got um, resources like superiority die, um, breath weapon, action search. We've got those features like here, like breath weapon, it's explained what it does, uh, draconic ancestry, everything is really, um, it's just there. Uh, you can action search, it's like an active and a descriptive thing, so it's like completely there so you can you can read everything that's here you can have here now and you can see it's a class fighter level four it's a battle master um, he has got no spells he's got an inventory he can do an unarmed strike too he has a crossbow longbow he wears chain mail so his armor class is 19 his initiative is one uh, that's here uh, his hit die whatever he has left is here Psst. Hit die is, you know, if you're multi-classing, it's really complicated to calculate hit die and Foundry just has one hit die. So if you are multi-classing wizard and barbarian, for example, um, you will just have four hit die and it Foundry doesn't know what kind of type of die it is. It's just not that great in that regards, but it's really complicated with multi-classing. I have to admit that. We'll do the best we can. Um, thanks to my patrons, I've uh, fixed or enhanced the, for example, the spell slot calculation if you're multi-classing. So I, I can alleviate some some of this. Okay, now let's take a look at the next one, Azaki. Let's go and add slash chase into that. So let's make it manually. We can do that too. Control A, Control C go here and just paste it over there. So we've got Azaki there. We've got his features. We see it's Ranger Rogue. Um, we've got his hit points. We, you can see actually it's 1d8 per Rogue and 1d10 per Ranger. So you've got this information here, but it's not there, you know. That's, that's just the way it is. He's got some spells. Not that many because he's not a wizard. He's got a biography, personality traits, everything is here. His inventory is there. And let's take a last look at Rithlock. Let's make it again like that. 
Let's close that window. Make sure it really reloads with the correct. See, it's still turning, so I gotta be patient. All those spells are data beasts. Don't want to translate that. So here we've got like 60 items already, and an item is basically almost everything within Foundry is an item. So here we got this inventory again. Consumables. He's got a scroll of uh, Revivify. Uh, he's got his features again and his spell book. So that's nice. Okay, um, now we've got mm, we've got the monsters in place. We've got the um, characters in place. Uh, what else is needed to have a great experience? We've we, we need some nice tokens. Let's create a scene real quick. Um, let's upload. Um, let's make it ray. Uh, we need to go. Is that the right folder? Yes. Let's go to data and upload and let's create a directory like scenes and let's go to upload and scenes and let's upload a file and I've, I've, I am a patron of so many map makers it's my hard drive you need to spin up now you can do it thank you Metal maps. Um, let's take uh, our afternoon maps. He's so underrated. He's extremely nice. And one of his last, uh, let's check one of his last casino, I think. Let's take the casino. Uh, that's so nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's upload that one. Uh, Grunt. Casino, so your party is heading over to the well known casino in Neverwinter. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward because I, if you are, if you are uh, at a weird screen resolution, like if you are, if your screen is not full screen, and sometimes when you create a scene, it's distorted. So just resize the browser window for a Jiffy and then it um, will be okay. We've got two pool tables over here. Now let's have a look at the last uh, module, um, the tokenizer. So we've got, um, we need some upload directory. Let's take the upload user directory. Um, this is basically a tiny token editor in game. So you can say which default frame for characters and NPC should you be using. I've included some of those. Um, if you go to modules, tokenizer, image, see those two, two frames are here. You specify your upload directory. So I just used this upload user directory. So every token and avatar image that is uploaded will be stored there. And the token size should be 400 pixels. So let's save that. And if we go now to Rotobro and we click on this character image, the tokenizer pops up. And then you can actually, you can do so much with it. So just, Let's unlock the this one and make it a little smaller. And let's rotate it a tiny bit. And let's make the rest of it like that. Okay, this is Rotobro. Hey. We will be leaving Azaki like that, actually. So we hit OK. And we see all these things are popping here. And with lock, you will get just the default frame, too. Let's unlock it a bit. So 
So now we've got some nice tokens, which you can drag onto the scene. And here we are, all set. We've got the characters. You see the vision settings over here. Rithalok has is a human. He has no dark vision. Azaki is a wood elf, so he has some. And if we configure the global illumination on the scene, everything is seen all right. So we've got characters, we've got monsters, and we've got tokens, and we've got nifty, nice icons. Right, strange neighbors. Um, so everything is, is great, and everything is here. And you will be having a lot of fun of playing with all of those tools. And about using Foundry beyond these very very basic setup things, perhaps I will do um, some some other videos about it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope um, some of the setup steps are now more clear for you. And um, well, yes, provide feedback. Join the Discord. Join the Patreon if you think it's great what I'm doing here. Um, just stay lovely, people. Goodbye.